Hi there, I'm Gremlin, and Chachi asked me to make this video. Chachi Sanchez, uh, the VR citizen. I'm also a VR citizen. Although Chachi helped me get mine set up. Uh, Chachi asked me to help uh, with the profile inspector part of this because uh, I use NVIDIA Profile Inspector to be able to use DLSS 4 to in, in, uh, in Vorpex while I'm playing Star Citizen. Sorry, my voice is a little blah, I'm sick, so I still wanted to get this out of the way and get it made. But uh, this is like the, like the best thing I've ever seen. So I, uh, I went ahead and went into uh, in DLSS uh, settings here in my uh, NVIDIA Profile Inspector. You can download it. Uh, it literally just goes into your uh, NVIDIA Profile and allows you to change certain things that it doesn't allow you to change in the NVIDIA app right down here. Uh, right now I'm forcing vertical sync off. I'm also turning off triple buffering. Uh, I don't have any of the la low latency stuff on. Well, I mean, I might have that on. I don't know why I have that on. Let's turn that off. I don't need the ultra low latency. I'm running a 4090, so. Um, I leave everything that I can on use the 3D application setting, but I lock my FPS to 72. I do not let it go higher than that, merely because it does not work. I leave G-Sync off. Um, I've also got it to where everything in the anti-aliasing sections is application controlled that I can. Uh, I, I leave uh, MFAA on. Let me see. Everything, everything that I can, I set for, um, for that. Sharpening filter is on as well. Let me see. Anisotropic filter is off. So I don't have it turned on at all. But I do have negative LOD bias clamped. You must use that for this to help uh, with uh, stability and crashing. I have high quality selected because I'm running a 4090 and I have trilinear optimization turned off. Mainly I'm running this at the highest possible settings with as little filtering and as little anything as possible so that the VR headset can actually work with it. Uh, now here's the big important part. Um, enable DLL override. On DLS overridden, DLSS overridden by latest available. That will override to DLSS 4. And then you're going to want to get rid of your preset. You're going to want to go profile K, preset K. It is one of the older presets, but it works the best. I don't force a quality level, but uh, some people do. Um, I do use prefer maximum performance on my power management mode. And I do have RTX on. So digital vibrance is on. I can actually go in right now with RTX on. All right, let's see. I also have Open Composite on um, to, to allow for OpenXR. So let's see how this works. I will even check our, uh, our FPS and everything. Here we go. Just playing my info. All right, so right now we're at 60 FPS. Of course, this is just the loading screen, so I... I don't doubt that. Of course it would be. But as we load in, let's see. Come on. Let me in, please. I need my verse fix. There we go. Found us a server, and we're in. Everything is working good. FPS is going up. And get out of the seat. That should cause the FPS to drop a set for a second. Yep, there it goes, 61. We're right around 60 FPS. This is not too bad. Opened inventory, dropped a little bit. Yep, that's what I expected. All right, let's see. Some of the jank that I would normally expect is not here. Normally when loading into a station in Pyro, uh, it's pretty stuttery, even in VR. And this is actually not doing too badly with Copen Composite and Profile K on. I'm actually kind of impressed with this. Server FPS is staying pretty decent. And there's a drop right there, 48. That's not horrible. Um, as long as it stays above 45, you won't generally notice a lot of FPS problems in VR. Yeah, there it goes. See right there, 38. I noticed that where everything started looking a little stuttery. 
And that happens because I stepped close to the ASAP terminals, where all of this is happening right now. As you can see, they've got the debug code on for everything going on over here in the elevators and the ASAP terminals, so that's going to make everything laggy over here just for the time being. That should go away as they get done with uh, debugging the elevator code. Alright, we're going to select something... That one's been destroyed. Let's make sure to get rid of that problem. Alright, there we go. Let's get something... You know what, we're gonna go with that. Alright, so we're gonna go and get into the hangars, because that should bring us into an instance that will allow the FPS to stabilize quite a bit. Right now we're at 50-something, which isn't too bad for in a station and running full ray tracing in VR. And I'm even going to show you. Well, actually, let me get out of the elevator first, so I don't, you know, end up stuck in here. Ah, there's my course there. 48, 49, and it should start going up. Yep, 51, 52. All right, let's see. Just so I can show what I'm doing. There's 38, 40 by 21, 60, borderless, direct 3D 11. Quality, DLSS, and I am running full photo mode, hence why it's uh, angry with me. I have no V-Sync, no motion blur, no film grain, no nothing. Alright, here we go. Some of this is going to be dependent on the server that you connect to. I'm not even going to lie to you. But right now it's doing pretty decent in VR for having full ray tracing on. I don't normally run it with full ray tracing on and full dynamic vibrance, but as you can see, it does change a few things. Like you can see like the different reflections off the metal, the different light beams coming out of the lights in the ceiling, and the reflections bouncing off of things. It definitely changes a few things. All right, here we go. Let's get our engines on. Lift us off the deck. Get our landing gear up. And drop us back down towards the deck, because they put us in a medium hangar in the Corsair, which I don't understand. Sig. Why? That wing, man. It snags the entrance every time. Unless I, like, you know, do this number. Here we go. Ta da No wing snag! And here we go, let's open her up. 69 FPS, that's not bad. Nice. As we get further and further away from the station, the FPS should get better. Let's drop into Quantum and see what happens. Normally I get some stutter when I go into Quantum. Nope, not really any stutter. I didn't even get a really big FPS drop this time. Well, let's see what this is looking like. I'd say that's looking really good for the amount of particles in the air. Or, well, in space. There's no air out there. Don't try to breathe, trust me. Don't breathe this. Alright, here we go. Closer we get to the star, when we get out of- when we drop out, we should have an FPS drop as everything loads in. I expect for the planet to be mostly bare when we get there. So when we get, when we actually arrive, it'll it'll render in. There goes one render right there. That was a drop. Small FPS stutter. This happens every time. It doesn't matter what it's with. All right, there we go. All right, this planet it was rendered in already. That's actually pretty impressive. It means it was cached. And now we're going to head to Pyro 4. Mainly because it's a lot to, ro to load in, and it's absolutely gorgeous. The textures on Pyro 4 are beautiful. I absolutely recommend it if you have any lo-fi to do there. That you record it and post it, because everything there is pretty. Everything. I I'm about to show you. We should be on the daylight side, I hope. If not, I will try to take us over to the daylight side. And let me enable full VR mode. 
Alright, there we go. We're gonna head back down towards Goner's Deal. As you can tell, it's one of my favorite places to do low fly at. Everything's working pretty well today. Fifty-seven. And let's see what happens when we load in down here. And we should get a drop as soon as we stop. There we go. Yep, there it went. Fifty-four. Doesn't look like it's doing too bad. Let's see if I can give you all a full view of the VR and how it does. There we go. For those of you that ask about motion sickness, I do not suffer from motion sickness. I don't have that problem. So, uh, if you do, this could very well trigger that. Um, I would seriously recommend uh, checking with your doctor before doing it, I guess. If you suffer from vertigo and things like that, because this does indeed get a bit disorienting if you're not used to it. I have quite a few hours in flight simulators, so... This actually is just normal for me. I love being in the air. I mean, this might be evidenced by the fact that I'm, you know, low-flying a, uh, a Corsair. If you, as you might look, you see the light shafts coming through the mountains. That should give me an FPS drop just from that. Let's see. Yep, 45. Right on the target. It isn't horrible, I'm not gonna lie. And as everything reses in and loads, and loads in, it actually stays pretty well. Also, if I slur or stutter, I am deaf. I cannot hear my, my own voice very well uh, without my hearing aids. So even with them, it's not great. I may not sound deaf, but I'm deaf. Like, can medically prove it and everything. <laughs> Alright, here we go. The closer I get to the ground, I should get an FPS drop once again. And the closer I get to any particles, like those clouds. 47, yep, I'm showing a drop. But it's not dropping below 45, which is not normal. All right, let's see. I think this is where I should end the video. 40, 39, yeah, see, now we're getting a little bit of the unpleasant uh, effects, but it's not horrible. There's 48. And the headset is maintaining its uh, FPS without a problem, so it's mainly the game at this point. Alright, well, I am Gremlin, and this has been how to uh, use NVIDIA Profile Inspector to help make your gameplay better. I am signing off. Bye!